everyone. So it's good to be with you today. My name is Dr. Carol O'Donnell, and I'm the director or the head of the Smithsonian Science Education Center. And as Mr. Shaw said, I work in Washington, D.C. in the United States. I'm also an educator, and I've been an educator since 1983. So that's 38 years of being in a classroom, and I love it. And as Mr. Shaw said, I'm here today to share with you ways to give back to your community, just like um, Kakashan has done, but our work focuses on ways to protect yourself and others from COVID-19. And my friend, Hannah, is here as well. So since the start of the pandemic, the Smithsonian Science Education Center has been engaging youth ages eight to 17, just like you, in hands-on activities that help explain the underlying science of COVID-19 and its protective behaviors. So when I say protective behaviors, I'm talking about those things that help you to not either contract COVID-19 or give it to others. We help you discover why you're being asked to wear a mask, why you have to wash your hands and why you need to socially distance even after you get your first vaccine shot. So for example, did you know that when you sing, shout, or even breathe like this, that these small respiratory droplets come out of your mouth and you can feel them and see them. And those respiratory droplets carry the virus. For the pandemic we're experiencing now, that's SARS-CoV-2, and it causes the disease COVID-19. And those small respiratory droplets, they carry the virus to somebody nearby. And that's why you wear a mask like this one or like this one, or even now the World Health Organization is saying maybe both of them, right? So the mask helps protect you from those respiratory droplets. So if you wanna actually test it out for yourself, you could take a bowl like this, Fill it with water, put your hands in it and flick and droplets will come off of your hand. Well, the further away you get from someone, the harder it is for those small respiratory droplets or small water droplets to actually reach the person. That's why you stand three meters or six feet away from somebody. And it's also why you wear a mask to protect yourself from the respiratory droplets from someone else or to protect your respiratory droplets that might have the virus in them from reaching another person. So both the mask and the physical distancing will help to protect others from the respiratory droplets and yourself. The other thing that you can do is simple soap. If you wash your hands, not just with water and not just by rubbing, but with soap and water for 35, 45 seconds, those that combination of soap and water will help to remove the virus from your hand and break it down. Doing those three simple things, washing your hands, wearing a mask, standing three meters apart, they give us hope because they know that they will help us protect ourselves and others from COVID-19. And now the Smithsonian Science Education Center is working on a project to educate youth on the importance of vaccines. What's the science behind them? How do they work? And what are the questions that you have to make a difference in your community to make certain that the vaccine can also protect you and others? So today, we're going to hear from my new friend and colleague, Hannah Pasek. She's from the World Scouting Organization. And like me, Hannah is an educator too. And she's focused her life's work on leading and empowering young people and organizations to do social good in the most optimal way. She works for causes. She's worked and studied in very culturally diverse environments in three different countries. And she's visited over 50 countries worldwide through her work at the World Organization of the Scout Movement and the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. So today, Hannah's going to tell you more about a new effort called the Global Youth Mobilization for Generation Disrupted which is supported by the World Health Organization and its Youth Council. She's going to tell you how you can get involved. She'll tell you about the big six, big six youth organizations who are coming together around a global initiative 
to shine a spotlight on young people just like you whose lives have been disrupted by COVID-19. And she'll talk about the ways that you can bring hope to others in your community through your contributions in response to the pandemic. Welcome, Hannah. Thank you so much, Carol, for the warm welcome. And I'm so excited to be here with all of you, especially after such an inspiring start. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here and talk about an initiative that's bringing me personally a lot of hope and optimism for the future. And I hope that by the end of this short input, it will do the same for you. The pandemic we have been experiencing for the past year has brought unprecedented challenges to our lives as we know them. And this is especially true for your generation. Worldwide, you and your peers have had to pause your education, entry to the labor market, and you've struggled with COVID-19 yourselves or close within your family. Potentially, some of you may have even experienced violence and abuse as a consequence of living in confined and unsafe spaces. These are the concerns that brought together our six youth movements, which are comprised of the Scouts, the Girl Guides, the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, the YMCA, the YWCA, and the International Award, together with the World Health Organization to think of ways in which we can alleviate, at least to some extent, the negative impact of COVID-19. And here, I would just like to share with you a few examples of the kinds of initiatives that young people like yourselves have been doing around the world in this last year and really truly helping your communities in overcoming the challenges of COVID-19. For example, here you see scouts in Tunisia helping in packing food parcels for their communities. And apart from that, they have delivered 1.8 million service hours to date, volunteering and helping sanitize public spaces, helping organize queues of citizens in front of public institutions, raising awareness among their peers about the risks of infection of COVID-19. Next, you will see some of our girl guides in Nepal reaching out to their community and explaining what is COVID-19 and how to protect yourself from it. They've also been issuing protective equipment for free to elderly members of their communities. And a final example I'd like to share is the true collaboration between the International Award of Participants and the Red Cross and Red Crescent Society in uh, the Bahamas, where they have had a chance to together um, put together their efforts and serve hundreds of families in need of food who have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, lost jobs, or simply have not been able to make a living through this past period. Now, as you can imagine, this is just a snapshot of everything that has been happening around the world. And I'm sure that all of you have had a chance as well to help your communities, no matter how small that uh, opportunity has been. The good news from my end is that we from the Big Six and WHO would really like to amplify these efforts. Our aim is to offer hope to young people worldwide through three key opportunities, and you can participate in them as well. First, if you have a great solution to a problem that your local community is facing as a consequence of the pandemic, you can apply for seed funding to implement it. Our project will be giving you an opportunity to get some initial funding to start off your great idea. Second, if you would like to talk with your peers from all around the globe about your generation's need in a post-pandemic world, we will be hosting a digital global youth summit in April and you can join us. And third, we will be collecting useful resources for young people to learn and develop personally and professionally, and you will be able to access these free of charge through our platform. This initiative, the Global Youth Mobilization for Generation Disrupted, is designed with young people and for young people and aims to recognize and celebrate the amazing contributions you as young active citizens have been making daily in your local communities worldwide. We know 
and recognize your efforts. And we want you to know that you haven't been forgotten in this crazy world that has been happening and everything that has caused disruption all across our communities. For this reason, I invite you to join us and bring your creative ideas to solve the challenges that your local communities are facing. We will be launching a call very soon where you can see more information about um, the grants that I mentioned, as well as the event and the resources. So please keep an eye on our website, big6.org, where, we'll where we'll be sharing some more information in the coming weeks and months. Thank you, Carol, and thank you, Mr. Shaw. Yeah, thank you so much, Hannah. Um, I hope that there, we all know, in order to make a difference in your local community, you do need those resources. If you want to buy masks for others or educate people on the importance of soap or distribute soap or food, you need financial resources. So to be able to apply for them, I know there are thousands of students who are listening in right now, and that's a wonderful opportunity for them to get support. And then to meet other people like you and others who wanna make a difference in their community at the summit. So thank you for, your, for helping share your information with us. Thank you, Mr. Shaw, for your time.